Thank you, Lord, that we again can gather. We thank you, Lord. Meekness and majesty. We bow before you here in this place. Help us to rest in you. Help us to rely on you. Help us to remember all that you've done. Renew our strength. Lift up those who mourn. Strengthen those who may be weary. Heal those who are sick. Lord, we want to abide in you. We want to dwell with you, walking daily with you. As we open your word, as we take a few moments to consider again what you might say to us, Lord, we are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. My message this morning is abide in Him, rest in Him, abide in God Almighty, trust Him, know Him, love Him, walk with Him. Basing my message around Psalm 91 today. It starts off like this. Whoever dwells in the shadow of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. That is brilliant. I am glad about that. That God can be trusted. That he will be a place that I can run to. It goes on to say, Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. That sounds good, doesn't it? He will cover you with his feathers. Who knew he had feathers? And under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and ram part. Abide in him. Dwell in God's presence. Be aware that God walks with us daily. And that we are walking with him daily. The world tries to squeeze out God from our life. His existence, his presence. But come today and rest in him. In the shadow of the Almighty. Isn't that an amazing picture? Maybe you just need to know that God is there. That he's available. Speak to him, worship him, gather and honor him. God's presence, God's care, God's provision doesn't leave when we wander down the ramp and hop in our car, amen? He walks with us. Walk by faith. Walk by faith. Not not just by sight, but walk by faith. Take a step as God is on our side. Rest in Him. The amazing thing about Psalm 91 reminds me that God is watching and he's protecting and he's caring. Pastor, a friend of mine called Tim, 
I caught up with him the other day and we we're chatting. He said, oh, what are you speaking on on Sunday? He said, oh, Psalm 91. And he said, oh, oh, the COVID Psalm. He'd been ministering for a number of years in the UK and Scotland and is in Australia working with the Nazarenes and we were having a coffee and a chat and I said, the COVID Psalm, well, it certainly was in the UK because of verse 3. Thank you. The deadly pestilence. Well, they called that the COVID psalm, apparently. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and the deadly pestilence. Oh, that's better than last week. Yeah. I've got to give you a warning I've worked out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. On three. Yes, yes, yes that's right. <laughs> uh, the deadly pestilence. We survived, didn't we? That's all I'll say. We're still surviving. Ron, you're surviving. If he's there, wake up. What worries you? What harms you? What bothers you? Run to God. Go to him in prayer. Make room for him in your day. His arms are open. He's listening, he's caring, he's loving. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Has that been your story? Keep running towards Jesus. Keep reminding yourself of what he has done. Stop hiding. I don't know how some people cope in a godless world. Without faith, without Jesus, without a community, without a church. Because life isn't easy. And things are hard and terrible. Abide in Him. Rest in Him. Be a person of prayer. Dwell in His presence. Speak to the Lord. Nothing is too big and nothing is too small. Val had faith for her friend that they would get a house. And they did. He wants to hear from you. Psalm 5 verse 1, listen to my words, Lord, consider my lament. Sometimes we get stuck in the maybes and the what ifs. It takes up space in our day and it takes up space in our mind. And we're staring at the ceiling at 2 a.m., Don't camp there too long. Satan is the big distractor. You thought it was Netflix, didn't you? Or those pile of books beside the the bedside table there that you would need to finish. And you're only 20 pages in. Be found in his presence. Feed on his word. Make space and time for him daily. Make room for God because we make room for many things, don't we? I love what is said in Jeremiah 17. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose whose confidence is in Him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends its roots out by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes 
Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in the year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Bear fruit. Invest in others. Show them Jesus in a practical way. What soil are we planted in? What is the source of our growth, our discipleship, our faith? Where are we getting our nourishment from? We all need to be responsible for our own Christian growth and walk. Yes, I can give you a few tips. Yes, I can give you some encouragement. Yes, you can come here on a Sunday and hear a couple of messages. But you are responsible for your own walk and growth. I will help you, guide you, care for you, pray for you, point you in the right direction. But at the end of the day, guess who it's up to. It's up to you and me. Psalm 91, 10 and 9. If you say the Lord is my refuge... And you make the most high your dwelling. No harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. Or dwelling. House. Caravan. Make the Lord your dwelling place. Make God number one, trust in his promises, his protection, his care, his word. Let the storms come, the winds come, the floods, the drought, the rain. Let them come, for I will stand secure in my hope and faith in Jesus. The God who will protect me. I might have a few scratch and bruises. But he comes and enters our story and reminds us that we are loved and we're not lost and we're not abandoned, but we're dwelling with him. Two men are traveling the Emmaus Road and I was reminded of it last week. They're a bit sad, they're a bit confused, they're a bit lost, they're trying to put it all together. They know what was going to happen. They've seen things happen. and But soon their eyes would be open. Let us not miss Jesus traveling the road with us. In Luke 24, picking up around verse 14, they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself, the risen Lord, comes and walks with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. And then Jesus opens the, the scriptures and, and, and tells, reminds them of everything that was said and done uh, about him. And as they approached the village, verse 28, to which they were going, Jesus sort of continued on his way and was, looked like he was going on a bit further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread again. And he gave thanks and he broke it. And he began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. How frustrating. He's gone. Suppose we better eat the food now. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning? within us as we talked and walked along the road and he opened he opened the scriptures to us all those prophecies all those things that 
was said about the Messiah. Don't miss Jesus. Our direction up on the screen there will determine our destination. Maybe. <laughs> direction will determine our destination. Where are you heading? Direction determines destination. I pray you're heading in the right place. Where are we heading? Who are we traveling traveling with? Who are we talking to? Make Jesus your constant companion. Make him the source of hope and truth. Direction determines destination. Take the right path. Rest in the shadow of his wings. God bless you.